On today's episode, I'm going to install a three-point leveling system on an Ender 3. I'll show you how to install it and how well it works on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. Here's the Ender 3 that I want to install this on. As a baseline, I ran my bed level test. You can see it came out very good. I'll put a link in the upper corner here to that video if you missed it. I want to install this, the Gulf Coast Robotics three-point leveling system. I've heard from some people they prefer a three-point leveling system, so I figured I'd try it. This wasn't donated, I actually bought this. And it does kind of make sense because in geometry, three points define a plane, not four. I've never had a problem with a four-point system, but this is what it's going to look like, three adjustment knobs. The first step is to remove the bed material. I'm just going to unclip it here. Now this is a pretty worn out piece of build tack, but I'm going to stick with it because if this three point leveling system works with this, it's a good test. So I took that off and now I need to actually remove the bed. In order to do that, I just got to unscrew the knobs. There's four of them, one in each corner. So I just unscrewed them, spun them. And then when I got to the last one, I was getting pretty good at it. I could just spin it right off. And then I can lift this bed off carefully because I don't want to break the wires. And then I'll take the springs and the screws out from this bed and then I'm going to set it aside because we're actually going to work on the base that's underneath this. I got everything organized and the bed moved to the back so now we can get to this base. I loosened the screws for the mount for the belt idler for the y-axis, pushed it forward and now I can take these belts off the base. They come right out of a slot so I got the one off the front and then I slid the one off the back. Now I want to take this base all the way off so what I did was loosen that bracket further and then pushed it down. Now I can pull this base all the way off the aluminum extrusion because I need to get to those wheels and remove them and install it on the new one. So I put a wrench to the back of it and then I used an Allen wrench to the screw and just twisted these guys off, took them all the way off. So all four of them need to come off because we're going to mount them on the new base. Here's a comparison of the old base to the new base. You can see the new base has a flat side on it. There's a plate that goes on top of this. That's where the single adjustment controls two corners. So now we need to install the wheels on this guy so we can put it on the aluminum extrusion. There's a lot of different holes. The inner ones are for the Ender 3. There's a bigger hole and a smaller hole. The bigger hole gets the eccentric spacer. So the screw goes through the wheel and through the eccentric spacer, then a washer and then the lock nut. On the other side, the smaller hole, you just get a bolt, wheel, spacer, and nut, no washer. So I tighten these up with a wrench and an Allen wrench and once I get these four in, I can install this onto the aluminum extrusion. So I got the first one, made sure it's spun properly, and here are the four are. The wheels felt fine, so it's ready to go on the aluminum extrusion. Notice the bigger spacing at the back. That's also a sign of the wider gap that goes around the motor and hits the stop switch. So make sure you get this on the right way. Mine was a little bit tight, so I had to loosen the eccentric spacer and then tighten it back up in the front and the back to get this thing to fit tight and smooth. But once I got this moving and feeling pretty good, then I could install the belt. I installed the back belt first. It goes into the slot just like the original base. And then on the front, I had to reinstall that idler wheel back onto the aluminum extrusion. And then I could put the belt on the front. Now I needed to tighten the belt, so I just pulled that idler wheel bracket back with my finger and tightened one of the screws. It felt pretty tight, so then I tightened the other three screws and it was ready to go. The movement felt smooth and it was hitting the stop switch, so I was ready for the next step. These are the extra pieces that come with it. There's a long screw and that goes into this bracket and there's one side where it fits. So I put it in there and then you place it on top of the bed and it lines up with the holes. And then there's shorter screws that go through the bed into this bracket. And then there's a lock washer and a nut. And you want to make these tight, but I'm going to finger tighten them first and then I'll use a wrench and a screwdriver later. But we want these tight because they transfer that center position to the outer end. So we want this to kind of be one solid piece. So then I put the lock washer and the nut on the back, tighten that with my hands. And then I'm going to use a Phillips screwdriver and a wrench to get them nice and tight against the bed. And that also holds this screw in place, the center screw. So I don't have to worry about that slipping really. Now I take the two original screws that went on the other side I stuck it through the back, put a spring on it, and then the strain relief goes over the top of that. 
So this one was fine. It's actually going to hold the spring in place. But what was dumb is I put the other screws in and then the springs, thinking I could flip this over and the springs wouldn't go flying. But gravity wins every time. And it was dumb anyway because it's just as easy to put them in after. But you can see as I flip this over, boom, there goes the springs. And it turned out I could just put the spring on, line the screw up, get it in the hole much easier than trying to line it up. But hey, you got to give it a shot, right? Once I got the screws and springs lined up, then I could just push down on this thing and it felt pretty good. All I needed to do was install the three knobs. Two on one side and one at the other side, which is closest to the LCD. The last step was to clip the bed back on with the well-worn build tack, and then we can run a bed level test. Then I read my bed level G code that goes to each corner on top of the adjustment knob. And I did the left side, and then went to the right. Of course, there's no knob there. It went right to the corner. So I adjusted the single adjustment. And when it came to the front, I didn't have to readjust. So that bar going across seems to be doing its job. In the center, it was slightly crowned, so it was just slightly tighter. But then I laid down the test print where I actually rubbed my finger. And this is really where you get the fine tuning, you live adjust. And it was coming out great. This whole side looked really good with the single adjuster. So I let that run and I only had to make some slight tweaks to get the bed just a little bit closer to the nozzle on that right side with the single adjuster. Very minor adjustments. So I was really happy how this was working. I did adjust that single knob to bring the bed slightly closer to the nozzle just because I wanted to fill them at the stick a little better. But that's really all I did. And as the second layer went down, I stopped the print, moved the head to the side, brought the bed out, and really checked it out. And it's very smooth, very even. So I think it did a good job of leveling this bed. It worked well. The only thing I didn't like is the springs on the left side looked really good. But that single one on the right, because of that bracket, took up space. So that spring is really compressed. Overall, though, it worked really well. It also has extra holes for this handle so you can pull the bed out easier and also a single handle with a mount for a GoPro. But deep down, this is mainly a three-point leveling system. There you have it, three adjustment points instead of four. It works and I got it to level pretty well. Is it worth it? Well, that's your call. There's some nice features though that you can add the camera or the handle and it's already drilled for that. This also has holes so it can fit an Ender 3 Pro with the wider base and also a CR20. So it can be used on other machines, not just the Ender 3. Now if your base like this is bent, sometimes they get bent in shipping, people have asked me, can you just buy a new base? And this is one way to replace it and then get a three-point leveling system. So that is an option. But losing one extra knob, I don't know if it's that big a deal. And that spring being compressed more because of that bracket being in there, I think they should have supplied a new spring, a shorter spring that was a little stiffer so you could still get to travel, but not crush it like that. So anyway, I think it's a decent setup. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. So if you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. And if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. That way you don't miss an episode. I'll see you next time right here. The Filament Friday.